it's important that you understand um, the criteria for each one of these scholarships. Several people who used to work here at the college have donated money to be used for scholarships, particularly for people who, in this case, want to go into teaching. Uh, when people retire or if somebody passes away, their family might set up scholarship funds. And so these are some of the individuals who have done this for education. First of all, there's the Linda Peters Scholarship. Criteria for this is a female student carrying at least six credits and intends to earn a baccalaureate degree in education and who intends to teach at any level. But it says here that preference may be given to single mothers. So that's very important for you to know. Um, because what a lot of times these people are trying to do is they are trying to provide for students from a variety of different backgrounds and circumstances because we know that we can all use uh, some money from time to time. The Lottie Rachel Peters Arts and Humanities Scholarship. This will be a full-time student who intends to major in literature, writing, fine arts, music, art history, music history, foreign language, or in the teaching of any of these. And preference may be given to students in need of financial assistance. So that's something that you want to think about. And even if they aren't here, if you have friends, if you know people who might fall into some of these categories, let them know that these scholarships exist. I did not know how many people exactly would be here, and I didn't want to overrun uh, paper. We give so many trees. So many trees give their lives so that we can be educated. So that's why I'm doing this on the, on the overhead. But if you want to have a hard copy of this, you can stop by our offices, and we can certainly get that for you. Those of you in child development, you have the Phyllis Fratsky Child Development Scholarship. This provides monies for students enrolled in the child development program at GRCC to use for tuition or for child care at the GRCC lab preschool. And underneath some of these, you will see the contact person here. You're going to be contacting uh, Rebecca Brinks, who is the child development department uh, director, Dr. Brinks. Then you have the John D. Hannock Memorial Scholarship. Now, this is a kind of long one. Uh, established in 1997, this scholarship fund was created by Barbara Hannock O'Keefe in memory of her late husband. So that's an example of what I'm talking about when people pass away. They often bequeath money to the college. The fund provides annual scholarships to financially deserving students who have achieved a minimum 2.5 GPA. Now for the Teachers of Tomorrow scholarships, Overall, we require that you have at least a 2.8, so you would fall into this automatically because you have to have a higher GPA than is what is indicated here. Awards will range from a minimum of 350 to part-time students to a maximum of 2,400 for full-time students. Three $1,600 awards will be designated for Teachers of Tomorrow Scholarship reci recipients selected by the Teacher of Tomorrow Scholarship Selection Committee. I sit on that committee along with Dr. Joseph Hesse. Some of you may know him. He teaches physical science here. Each recipient must have displayed a sincere desire to continue his or her education and have been recommended by a high school instructor, college faculty member, or the GRCC should be director of financial aid. The fund will provide the executive director of the GRCC Foundation $1,600 annually to provide special needs grants to deserving students upon recommendations received from faculty members. Now that last part, you don't have to worry about too much. The main thing that you want to keep in mind is they are looking for someone with at least a 2.5 GPA and they are interested in continuing their education and they've been recommended by a high school instructor or college instructor or the director of financial aid. That's why your letters of recommendation are so important. And in a couple of minutes, I'll talk to you about what makes a good letter of recommendation. The other scholarships are the Philip Runkel Family Teachers of Tomorrow Scholarship. One $1,600 scholarship, sorry, let me bring that down, will be available to a female GRCC student who intends to seek a degree at the elementary or secondary level. Potential recipients must be enrolled full time, have achieved a 2.8 GPA, and be recommended for the award by at least one high school or college instructor, and submit a short essay on why they would like to enter the field of teaching, which of course will be covered when you write your essay. And for this one, you need to contact Dr. Hesse in physical science. 
the William J. Sharon Teachers of Tomorrow Scholarship. Recognized contributions William Sharon made to the field of education in the state of Michigan. Recipients will have demonstrated academic excellence in the field of mathematics with the intention of teaching math at the high school or college level. Candidates must complete a Teachers of Tomorrow scholarship essay. So that one's very specific for math. The next one, the Weggy Teachers of Tomorrow scholarship provides for freshman and sophomore students interested in securing an elementary or secondary teaching degree. Applicants must submit a one-page essay stating their career goals. Awards are available for both part-time and full-time students. Now, some of these in their description specify your having to write an essay indicating why you want to teach or, or elaborating on your goals, that kind of thing. What we have done as a scholarship committee is we have broadened the focus of the essay to what is described in your uh, handout that you received. So that's the essay that we are going to be looking at and these individuals have approved our use of that particular essay. Now here's a very specific one. The Women in Science Education Scholarship. Two $300 scholarships will be awarded annually to sophomore women who have demonstrated excellence in studying chemical, physical, or biological sciences. Sometimes people are here beyond the sophomore year. You know that many people are here maybe three years instead of just two. So you say, well, sophomore year, then I'll be leaving. Well, for some people, not necessarily. So we work through that. But it says recipients must intend to continue their education working toward a career teaching in one of the above areas of science and have achieved a minimum 3.5 GPA in their freshman year at GRCC. Applicants must submit a statement of career intent and a transcript from GRCC, including address and phone numbers, which of course we will have. And then you have the, and for that when you contact uh, Mrs. Foster in biological sciences, some of you may know her, te she teaches the uh, biology 101E. And then there, there is the Albertus Elvey Scholarship that award will be given each year to a part-time or full-time student of any race, religion, or cultural background who is enrolled in chemistry. So if you want to teach in the sciences, chemistry in particular, then you might qualify for the Albertus Elby Scholarship. As you can see, some of the scholarship descriptions are much more specific than others. The Elby Scholarship, very broad, very general. Some are much more specific. Once you complete your application, you have written your essay, you have submitted your two letters of recommendation, we are going to then um, go from there in terms of determining how you might fit into one of these categories. That is why it is so important for you to let us know what level you plan to teach and what your major, your teachable major will be. And if there is any other, um, if there are any other extenuating circumstances, that might fit the bill, for example, if you are a single parent. And if it says single parent, then I dare say that that, require, or that um, uh, pertains to men as well as women, because sometimes we think single parent, we automatically think women. Men also are raising children successfully alone for various reasons, so that might be something you'll want to think about. Okay, so those are your main um, scholarship descriptions. There's one more I want to share with you, which is really very specific. Excuse me. This is a brand new one. I don't know how many of you uh, ever had Mrs. Kroom for political science, but this is the Gertrude Kroom Excellence in Education Scholarship. She is now a retired uh, faculty member from social sciences. This scholarship is designed for students who want to pursue a degree in the field of elementary or secondary education, but they have to be full-time at Grand Rapids Community College, having successfully completed a minimum of 12 credit hours with no grades less than a C and an overall GPA of 2.5 or better. Applicants must be graduates of a Grand Rapids public school and reside in one of the following zip codes. Now, when a person sets up a scholarship, 
they set up their own criteria because sometimes they are trying to accommodate a certain population like single parents or women in science. So she wants to get people who come from Grand Rapids Public Schools, people who would like to go back and teach in an urban setting. Students must complete an application by the March 15th deadline and complete an essay focused on working with underachievers or at-risk students. So you do have some individuals who want to go into alternative education, want to work with students who fall into this, these two categories, they're underachievers, they're at risk. That might be something that you're interested in if you went to a Grand Rapids public school. This essay that you will write for this particular scholarship is different than the one that we have in our Teachers of Tomorrow packet. It will still qualify you, but I have that information if you want to see it. I have the specific prompt, so I can give you that one. Okay, so those are the descriptions of all the scholarships. Are there any questions about those? Say you're eligible or fit the criteria for like three of them. Then we look at, we put a lot of things together and we see which one best fits your profile. Okay, so mm -hmm. you usually just get possibly just the one. One, oh yes, one. you just get one. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're gonna get one. So that's why it's important for you to analyze your, uh, analyze the criteria and really think about where do I best fit for all of this. Okay, and then very quickly, because I know some of you have classes, uh, when we talk about the scholarship essay, we are going to be looking for certain specifics. I am an English teacher. I read the essays. Dr. Hesse reads them as well, but I read those essays, and we read them with an eye for quality. It is not just that you address the topic, but it is the way that you address the topic. And without reading this whole thing to you, as you can see, we will evaluate this on a scale of one to five. And these are the criteria that will put you at a certain point on that continuum. Rather than bog you down with reading everything, those of you who have had English 101 and 102 know what good writing should be. Let's look at number four and five. The writer's essay reflects clear understanding of and response to the prompt with lively language, details, and examples. We really want examples from you that illustrate strong main ideas. No mechanical errors almost, maybe one or two. The approach to the prompt is original and demonstrates an awareness of the necessity for connecting to the audience. I'm not going to get on my English teacher soapbox, but if you want to write this essay and you want to be at four or five, then you need to gauge yourself against these criteria. And if you aren't sure, go to one of your old English teachers. Or if you want to, you can come to me uh, on the third floor. I'm right down the hall from Stacy, and I will look over your essay to see if you're on track. Five is the highest. The essay is written at a high level of, orig of originality. And when we talk about original originality, we're talking about sounding authentic, sounding like this is coming from you, not from a textbook, okay? We wanna hear your voice. We wanna hear your personality. Demonstration of critical thinking and use of appropriate language for the prompt. The writer reaches out to and connects with the reader emotionally. When we read your essay, we really want to feel that this person really wants to be a teacher. We want to feel your commitment. We want to feel your dedication to what it is you're about to do. There is an audible voice that uses powerful language to convey a depth of feeling about the prompt and mechanical accuracy prevails. And you know mechanics, punctuation, spelling, those kinds of things. Again, if you get ready to write your essay and you want to look at these criteria again, you can come and see me and I will have those for you. But this is what's going to give you the best chance at receiving one of these scholarships in terms of the essay. That's what we're going to be looking for, at fours and fives. Those are going to trump ones, twos, and threes any day, okay? Questions about the criteria? And lastly then, the letters of recommendation that Stacy talked about. We find sometimes that students get letters of recommendation that are very vague and very, very general. Um, we say, first of all, you have to have two 
and one of them has to be from a GRCC faculty member. But we say don't ask relatives because sometimes they're too close. You know, mom, will you write me a letter of recommendation? You're my son. What am I going to say? You're my daughter. I'm not going to say anything bad. We want somebody who can be a little more objective. So don't ask relatives. Letters should come from persons outside of your family who can be objective, former teachers, ministers, youth leaders, job supervisors. One letter is required to be, again, from a GRCC faculty member. So think of someone here that you've worked closely with, someone whose class you enjoy, they can write the letter for you. These people should have known you for at least six months. Okay, so you want to get someone who has a track record with knowing you. They should be very specific about what skills you have demonstrated since they are writing for you to possibly receive a Teachers of Tomorrow scholarship. Then they need to speak to what skills they think you have that would make you a good teacher. They should comment on your positive character traits and they should address why they feel you would make a good teacher. Now I have enumerated these, but this is not to say that the letter has to uh, be first paragraph number three, second paragraph number four, uh, third paragraph number five. It doesn't have to be that stilted. These ideas can be incorporated in the letter. I'm just suggesting to you that this is what you should ask them to include, and they can include it in any way that they like. Strong and specific letters of recommendation are always, always an asset to your professional file, and those who read these letters tend to give more weight to the ones that follow these guidelines. If I were you, I would be sure that I would keep these letters of recommendation, keep a copy of these letters of recommendation for your portfolio. Because when you get ready to go for a job, it's going to be good to be able to say, you know, I. And if you get one of those scholarships, especially, I applied for this scholarship, I received this scholarship when I, when I was at the community college, and this is the letter of recommendation that I think helped me get that scholarship. So you wanna keep these things, anything that is going to put you in the best possible light to separate you from the rest of the pack when you get ready to get a job. So these are the kinds of things that you need to keep in mind as you are preparing for possible application for the Teachers of Tomorrow Scholarship. We hope that many of you qualify for these scholarships. Um, if you have additional questions or you need something, a hard copy, please let me know and I will get that hard copy for you. Let your friends know as well. If you missed something, this will be on our website because as you can see, it's being videotaped. It will be on the website so you can go back and review this if you need to or let your friends see it if they couldn't be here. We have any questions, specific questions. Well, I certainly appreciate your participation, your being here. I told you we wouldn't keep you long because I have gentlemen here with the class. They brought food. And so certainly go back there and, yes, hungry college students. <laughs> anyway, have some refreshments. You can sit and talk if you need to or if you need to be off to class, that's fine. But thank you so much. And stay in touch with me if you want to apply for a scholarship.